I am sure that you missed striding shot many times, regardless of whether you are beginner or more experienced pool player. But the main question is, why we are missing striding shots and what we can do to avoid these mistakes? But before we start, be sure to leave a thumbs up for me and hit the subscribe button to be updated with videos like this. In most cases, the main reason that we are missing one of the most important shot in pool is fact that we are not able to hit the cue ball at its center. And the first very important thing we need to talk about is eye alignment. When you aim shot, then each of your eyes see the same thing, but our brain combines these two views and creates one final image that we ultimately see. But maybe one of your eyes is stronger and in this case your head can be located in wrong position, which results with wrong eye alignment. Many professional pool players have different dominant eye and we can clearly see this phenomenon during matches because they have positioned their heads in different ways. If our head is in the wrong position, then our eyes are in the wrong position, which will then result that we are not able to hit the cue ball exactly at the point we intended. Such a hit of the cue ball will cause it to miss the object ball because we experience a phenomenon called deflection. This means that when we are hitting the cue ball on its side points, then it slightly moves away from the natural line of the shot, which causes it to hit the object ball at the wrong point. Ok, but how we can determine our dominant eye and how to use it during shot? One of the best options to find your dominant eye is simple test where you need to stand straight in front of an object. After these steps, you need to create a triangle with your forefingers and thumbs. With both of your eyes open, center this triangle in the distance on an object like this cue ball. In the first step, close your right eye and if the object will move a bit to the left, then close your left eye. Now you can see that this object is centered with the triangle from your fingers and this means that your right eye is dominant. But the situation is different when after closing your right eye, the object remains in same place. And this means that your left eye is dominant because if you close left eye, then this object moves to the right. And now you can see detailed comparison between every possible situation where on the top we face dominance of right eye, but on the bottom side is situation where your left eye is dominant. When we manage to find the correct position, we will receive information in what position the head should be set and which of our eyes is dominant. This information will then help us properly position our head in relation to our cue stick so that we aim exactly at the point we intended to hit. Ok, so if we know which eye is dominant and in what position our head should be, then very important is ability to step into the shot exactly along the stride line of the shot. This is another big reason that players missing shots because they are not able to step into the shot along the correct line. The first very important thing to do is to find a stride line between the cue ball, the object ball and the pocket. We are dealing with a striding shot, so this line cuts exactly these three points. If we manage to determine this line, we need to make our cue move exactly along this line, therefore it is very important to put our body in the right position. The first important step is to extend this specific stretch line beyond the edge of the table and onto the floor. And this line shows us where we should place our right foot. If we are right-handed and hold the cue with this hand, then we place our right foot on the line. But if we are left-handed, then we place our left foot on this line. And it is very important to determine the correct distance at which our foot is placed in relation to the cue ball, and the ideal case assumes that this foot is set almost perfectly in the same line as the grip on our cue. If we could figure it out, then in the next step we need to move our second foot and place it in correct place. We need to take a step forward and put our second foot not on the same line of the shot, but slightly off this line to the outside. This is very important because if we put this foot onto the shot line, then our body will be unstable. Our legs must be positioned naturally, but this also depends on our height and may vary slightly in individual cases. 
So now we have positioned our body into the shot, but there is one more important thing we need to care about. And in this case we need to look closer on the position of our wrist and elbow. These two elements of our body are extremely important in whether our shot will be straight. We must remember that our elbow and forearm should be perpendicular to the table surface when looking from the back. This arrangement causes our hand to move in a straight shot line and increases our chances of hitting the cue ball at its center. Any bending of the elbow to the left or right will cause the cue to move along a slightly different line and your shot will not be perfectly clean. The situation is similar when it comes to the work of our wrist. If we look from the back, our wrist should also be in a straight line with our forearm. Likewise, in this case, any bending of the wrist to either side will result that we are not able to make this shot accurately. However, if we look at our hand from the side, when our cue contacts the cue wall, our forearm should form a right angle with the cue. And this positioning of our hand will allow us to maximize the chances of hitting the cue ball accurately. Another very important thing is the elevation of our cue stick and the length of our bridge. We need to execute shots with lowest possible elevation because if we elevate our cue higher, then each unintended side spin will cause the cue ball to curve and we will not able to hit the object ball at the correct point. And this happens because cue ball hit with side spin from high elevated cue stick rotates in a bit different surface which causes it to grab the cloth more and generates curve path. And another very important aspect is the length of our bridge and this means that we should adjust this length to the type of the shot but normally it should have around 1 feet length. If we significantly lengthen or shorten our bridge, we may have problems with the correct execution of the stroke with high accuracy. And to practice your center ball hitting, you can use this very helpful exercise when you need to put the cue ball exactly on the center point of the headstring and execute the shot at the center point of the opposite short rail. Cue ball after hitting the short rail needs to come back and touch our Q-tip again. This exercise will help you determine whether you are hitting the cue ball at its center because any incorrect contact will cause it to bounce off the short rail inaccurate and will not return in the right direction and we will miss our cue. But if you have trouble performing this exercise, you can use a trick that will help you determine the center of the cue ball. If we look closer on the cue ball, which is located perfectly at the center point of the headstring, then we can see kind of light shadow on its top which shows center line of the cue ball. So if we step into the shot, then we need to adjust our shot that it will be in the line with this light shadow. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will be able to leave a thumbs up for me and hit the subscribe button to be updated with videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next lesson. Take care.